I need to put the flash contact back into the shutter. First that brass plate goes in and then the flash contact post. This is a, some sort of styrene type plastic. It's very fragile. If you get solvent anywhere near it, it just turns to spludge. And it's almost always somewhat split and stretched so it doesn't want to go back into the square hole it came out of. So a bit of poking and prodding is normally required. There we go, that's just seated. This one's in quite good condition, I have to say. Sometimes it's a little bit fragmented. There's the pallet for the flash sink mechanism. And the pallet wheel rattles that backwards and forwards. This little wheel drives our flash contact and it's got a little cam on it. So it drives the pallet wheel, it also swings the flash contact in. So I'm just running a tiny smear of molybdenum and paste around the toe of that cam so that'll move smoothly. That drops over its post there. This is part of our flash sink mechanism. I'm just putting a smear of molybdenum paste on the tip of that where it latches. It pivots on that post. And I'm just checking the, the position of that. I'm getting the position correct so that when that swung across, that latch is behind it and it's held in place. The arm on our flash contact needs to swing along the side of that piece there. And at the moment that looks just right. We can leave that there. I'm going to put the flash contact, the moving flash contact in first. We can start with our 500th per second spring. That goes in there. That's the extra spring that gives the shutter the impetus to achieve something like the 500th of a second they claimed for it. Which may not be quite be true. Get that in place, make sure that the toe, of, the toe of this is not sitting on the top of that cam. There's one fixing screw. Just checking the position of that, that all looks good. That's good. Now there's a spring needs to be hooked on here and it's sometimes a bit entertaining getting this into place because it's under a bit of tension. You need a decent pair of tweezers, by which I mean a fairly stiff pair of tweezers. And I've got to connect the loose end of the spring to the hole in this arm and the last coil of the spring goes over this tab here. Like that. So that mechanism is all in the cocked position. It's armed and ready to uh, release. So that's quite good. 
Everything looks good there. There are two brass standoffs. And then there's a plate that goes on. This can be awkward to fit. That tab needs to go, drop down in this case into a slot in the outer case. While also getting this plate lined up with the post there and a post here. while not disturbing the position of those two brass standoffs that I'd put in place earlier. Okay, so that's sitting fine. And I can still see through the brass standoff at this end, so I'll put that screw in place. It's worth taking great care to see that the brass standoff is where the brass standoff should be because if you get if it moves and you get the screw in beside it instead of through it you'll find that something will end up jamming up the mechanism sometimes it's not easy to spot what you've done wrong this screw has a shoulder on it that the lever will revolve around if I can just get the thing in place and get it to sit there. So you have to get the screw through the arm which wants to fall off through the plate, through the standoff and into the mechanism plate. Sometimes it's reluctant. You've got to watch out for the spring and this arm. That looks good. Now I've got to swing the spring into position. The detent spring for this lever, which has just cleverly jumped off just to cause me grief. Getting this back in place is, is a nuisance. It's best achieved when the plate is off the shutter. No, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to fight with it. Oh, that went easily. Must be setting me up for a later failure. Okay, so there's my detent spring in place. Means that that lever tends to latch in one of two positions. All right, that's looking useful. I'll cock that again because I see I managed to release that. This lever here is going to get the one that is released by the shutter release and it allows this mechanism to run down. Okay, the B lever. The B lever needs to go in place next. Now the B lever's job of course is to hold the shutter open when you have the shutter set to B, as long as your finger remains on the shutter release button. And the fixing screw has a spring around the groove in the head of the screw. if I can get this spring sitting comfortably where I want it. Okay, if it stays here, that's all right with me. And the short end of the spring needs to come behind this lever here. I can pick up the tip of my tweezers and drag it over and clip it into position and the other end of the spring is on the inside edge of this lever here so that's sprung loaded 
get that screwed down, check that that moves freely, and it does, and that that lever moves freely. I can cock the shutter by moving this tab across, that would be cocked, that would be released. I'll try it in both positions, that seems to work fine. The shutter release lever has a funny little spring on it, which looks like it's the wrong shape, but it probably isn't. You've got to get that tucked down inside the case, down by that green lever. Get the arm on its pivot. Now that spring didn't tuck down inside the case. The spring's a funny shape because it has to clear the green lever. So it's got a step in it and it, it runs off in all sorts of directions. It's, whoever came up with the design of that was pretty clever. Okay, so that's all good. And now the shutter needs the, um, the main lever, as this part's called the main lever. So that's next. I'll take some molybdenum and paste, run it around the inside of that main lever, around the outside, Oh, this lever's bent here. I can see here that the tab on the end of this arm is very bent up. I'm going to have to straighten that out before I can do anything with that. Uh, I'm not sure how that came to be like that. That's um, very interesting. I wouldn't be able to get a pair of pliers and to that space and see if I can push this up with a screwdriver. Um, it may be that I've got to end up replacing this lever. That's most of the way. Now I can get some pliers onto it. Yeah, that, that, that arm doesn't exactly spring back into position very well. I'll have to look at that and see if something is rubbing on there perhaps. Yeah, that arm is a little bit twisted. Some of that's probably down to me levering on it, but some of it was possibly there before. Oh yeah. Not entirely sure why it's tending to stick. It may be just the position of this spring on it. This is not a screw, this is this post here is riveted in place. And the slot across there, the spring actually passes through that, it locates that spring. So don't be attacking that with the screwdriver, you're not going to like the results if you do. It just wants to, it's a bit sticky at just one point.
can't see anything rubbing on anything. I'll flush that with some solvent and see how it behaves. That seems to be behaving itself now. Alright, back where we were. So I was going to apply a touch of molybdenum paste to that tail there and on the, the head of the bird paw. I've got too much on here. I want some on this spot, here and here, on the lever of our retard gear train, here, some on this lever which controls the pallets, and some on this lever which latches the shutter closed in the cocked position. I'll get this main lever in position. So first I'll make sure that the shutter mechanism is cocked here. That swings that arm back out of the way. It allows me to drop that spring down into the recess more easily. Swing back with pallets, swing back the arm, drop that down into the body. Hook up the main the spring on the main lever to its post. And then this spring here has to couple to this arm here, so I'll get that swung into position. And this lever is not sitting down flush, or it's sitting on top of this lever. That's better. Tuck that down, get that down. B lever out from underneath. Okay. So everything's sitting there as it should be, waiting for the speed settings cam plate to be put in place. So that's here. So I'll run some molybdenum paste around the surfaces of this cam around the inside surface, around here, particularly in here where it catches the 500th of a second speed spring. And I'll put it into place on the shutter. Now the B lever always gets trapped underneath this unless you lift it back out of the way first. That's better. We should get, the shutter should open on B, so I'll cock it, that's working nicely. This should give us something like one second, okay, this should give us something like a tenth of a second. It sounds Incredible. I'll have to test this now to make see what the speeds actually actually are, but uh, that sounds good. Now I'll get this cover plate on in place. And just rotate this little locking screw. Okay. So set to a tenth. Yeah, it sounds doable. What's one second sound like? It certainly runs okay. I suspect it might be a little bit fast. It's a twenty-fifth like for, for example. Is that much different from a tenth? I wouldn't have said so. I think that the slower speeds are running a bit quick. I'll have to go and test those and find out. Well, the slow speeds are certainly too fast. The higher speeds appear to be quite good. Uh, certainly credible. Certainly within half a stop. And certainly not fast. Suggests to me that the pallet 
have been released to, to, to a too great an extent, which suggests that the speed train at this end is too close to the centre of too close to the centre line of the shutter. And if I slacken that screw and move the speed train out slightly, that should give us greater engagement of the uh, pallets and therefore uh, slow the speed down. I've got to find the right screwdriver for that because that one obviously won't do it. This one might. Yep. Oh, that's probably too much. Let's come back a bit. If I overdo this, the uh, shutter won't even run. It'll tend to jam. So adjusting the speeds on these early Compour type shutters is a real pain. Anyway, let's see if that's made a difference. I'll report back. Well, that required an awful lot of toing and froing, adjustments of the at both ends of the retard gear train in order to get things to work. But now they do work, and the timing looks good. So that took a lot longer than expected, um, but it's one of the reasons I do not disturb the retard gear train in one of these shutters typically. I certainly don't remove them to clean. I clean them in place. Unless I've got a very good reason to. If the retard gear train is creating problems, then I would probably choose to remove it and clean it. But getting the timing correct with one of these timing gear, these gear sets is, is quite difficult. And that's because you're adjusting your adjustments are at both ends of the speed train. I'm just trying to get this plastic insulator slugged down in the hole here at the moment and it doesn't really want to play the game. The plastic insulator is often missing with these shutters. Um, it's very small. If people see it on the work. If they noticed it loose on their workbench, they wouldn't know what it was. And there's a reasonable likelihood they wouldn't even notice it. Now I'm going to have to fish that out and possibly replace it. It must be too misshapen to fit down there. Okay, round two. I was able to get that somewhat distorted plastic insulating slug out of there and I have another one which is doing its best to get away Of course there's the small screw that holds that insulating slug in place. And 
that's not wanting to go in either. There we go, that's started. Let's see if it'll drive home. And the wire is firmly clamped in position, so we're on to a winner. So I'll just cock that. There's my curved cocking rack here, which I'll just give a wipe of molybdenum, molybdenum paste. To the inside of that and drop this into the track. Fit the case in place and this should be held in with two screws. One here. And that forms the post that aligns the shutter on the camera body and a small one here. There's a third hole in this outer shutter case but that serves no purpose, it's an empty hole. So don't be looking around for the screw that came out of there, there wasn't one. So now I've got to slide my little Click stops for the aperture settings in place. That's good. The front trim ring for the shutter. This is the plain ring. The front lens assembly. Now there's still some haze present with this lens, but it's much, much better than it was previously. Likewise the rear group. This, this cleaned up better than the front group, I have to say. It's cleaned up very well. So there's the shutter. If we put the shims on the back, the spacing shims, our shutter is now ready to go back on the camera body. Let's see if I can fit this into place. And we'll see if we have the cocking action correctly timed. No, that certainly needs to move around it further here. I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to lift the shutter out slightly and shift this ring over another tooth, re-engage it with the gear and see if it will cock the shutter. Not quite. No, another one. Here we go, shutter cocks and fires. Now, the key indicator now is to set the shutter speed to a 500th of a second, where the shutter needs a lot more tension in order to cock and see if it still cocks. It doesn't. That tells me that I need one more tooth of movement. There you go, that cocks and fires on a 500. I know that that's correct. So I can fit the retaining ring at the back of the shutter. So holding that firmly in position from underneath, 
can drop in the retaining ring. And dropping the lens spanner down in there. Get that to engage with the retaining ring. Right, now rotate that, that's tightened. Now I've just got that finger tight at the moment. I'm checking the action, that all appears good. Make sure it runs nicely on the one second speed, and it does. And that is pretty much it. I can tighten that retaining ring and uh, give everything the once over. Well, that's it, I think. So there we have it. After 50 years of dwelling in the basement, because it wasn't working very well. This camera is now back in the land of the living and ready to take photos. So hopefully I'll get this packed up and sent back to its owner. I'm sure they'll be pleased to see it. Thanks for watching.